Mac gaming has had something of a rocky history. Think different aficionados have had to contend with many unfortunate facts of the platform, whether it was the non-standard hardware 10 plus years ago, or that they make up a rather small number of users in the overall PC space today. As of January of 2015, Mac users make up a whopping 3% of users on Steam, and about 13% of the US PC market overall. This hasn't stopped many games from making it to the platform though. Over half of my own personal Steam library is Mac compatible, Yet if you were to go to any major Mac community and ask for advice for gaming on a Mac, say Reddit or Mac Rumors for example, many people will still tell you to not bother trying unless you install a copy of Windows. But is that really still the case? Does it really make sense to shell out your hard earned cash and a good chunk of your hard drive space just to play some games better? Well, that's what we're here to find out. We've taken a selection of modern games available between both OS X and Windows that have benchmark tools and had at it. Our test system was a late 2011 MacBook Pro with a fresh install of both the newest OS X Yosemite as well as Windows 7 64-bit. Our hardware configuration was a 2.4GHz quad-core i7-2760QM, 16GB of DDR3-1600 RAM, a 512GB Samsung 850 Pro solid-state drive, and to round it all off, an AMD Radeon HD 6770M with 1GB of VRAM connected to a 27-inch Apple Cinema display. This system, despite its age, provides a pretty good middle ground in terms of Mac hardware still, performing slightly better than the newer 15-inch Iris Pro machines many of you will probably be using, however worse than many of the iMacs and Mac Pros of the world. We ran each benchmark three times in quick succession and took the averages of the average frame rates we got from them. To start off, we have an old staple of many benchmark suites, Half-Life 2's Lost Coast benchmark. The reasons for choosing this one were twofold. For one, Source games make up the most played games on Steam and while Lost Coast is quite old, it still serves as a pretty accurate benchmark for what to expect out of games like Team Fortress 2, Dota 2, and CSGO. Two, the engine is generally considered relatively lightweight and efficient no matter what platform you run it on, whether it's Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. We ran this benchmark only on our high resolution, 2560x1440, and max the settings with the exception of anisotropic filtering and multi-sample anti-aliasing, both of which were kept at two times. On the OS X side, we saw an average of about 57 frames per second with some rather odd stuttering that would occur at repeatable points in the benchmark. We couldn't really find a solution for these and I'd suspect it has something to do with how Lost Coast loads in assets. On the Windows side, however, we saw an average of just under 70 frames per second with no such stuttering totaling to a frame rate increase of about 20%. Unfortunately, this seems to be part of the course for the rest of our benchmarks. Next up, we have Batman Arkham City. We ran this benchmark at both 1280x720 and 2560x1440 with the high preset with no anti-aliasing, tessellation, or NVIDIA physics enabled. At 1440p, we saw 18 frames per second in OS X to 21 frames per second under Windows, in 720p, we saw an average of 52 on the OS X side and 75 under Windows. Grin 2's benchmark didn't shake things up by any standards either. With the medium preset, no anti-aliasing and AF set to low, we saw 25 and 29 frames per second at 1440p and then 44 and 54 frames per second at 720p for OS X and Windows respectively. Tomb Raider saw the biggest delta in performance though with a nearly 40% drop in performance in OS X as compared to Windows in many scenes. At 1440p, OS X scored a 12 frames per second average while Windows scored a 17, but at 720p we saw 34 frames per second under OS X as compared to 53 in Windows. Finally, we move on to the UN Engine Heaven 4.0 benchmark. Now this one is an interesting one as we can compare not just general performance but the performance of different graphics APIs as well. Windows has had this little trick up its sleeve this whole time called DirectX, a graphics API developed by Microsoft that essentially unified PC gaming while also locking many developers to Windows in the process. OS X on the other hand uses OpenGL as its primary API which is also available on Windows but isn't used nearly to the extent that DirectX is on that platform. With that in mind, let's move on to the numbers. So we first ran the benchmark using only OpenGL on the Ultra preset with no tessellation or AA. Here that we can see, Windows OpenGL performance actually lags behind OS X on default drivers with OS X bringing 4.4 frames per second at 1440p and 17.8 frames per second at 720p, 
with windows pulling a 3.3 and 12.3 average at those respective resolutions. Once we bring DirectX 11 into the equation, things once again tip in favor of Windows, with a 5.1 frames per second average at 1440p and 19.8 frames per second average at 720p, closing closer to that around 20% increase that we seem to expect out of Windows at this point. And so some concluding thoughts. Windows definitely still has the upper hand in performance in games without a doubt, and also a far better selection of games, especially AAA titles. However, Mac performance has gotten better over the years as a general rule, and it will probably continue to get better, just as the number of games that actually make their way to the platform do as well. At the end of the day, only the consumer can really decide whether it's worth their hard drive space and money to keep Windows around for gaming. For the person that maybe only plays League of Legends, World of Warcraft, or Team Fortress, it might not be. At the end of the day, none of these games, with the exception of Tomb Raider, actually ran particularly poorly on this system under OS X or Windows despite the decrease in performance. So with that said, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe for more Mac gaming videos and coverage.